Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. When we talk about deepfakes, one of the first questions that usually comes up is how can I tell whether something is a deepfake? And if you'd asked me that a couple years ago, I would tell you that deepfakes usually have some tells, anything from warping to people's mouths not quite matching their words to people just not blinking at all. However, recent improvements in deepfake generators have made it almost impossible to look at a video and be able to visually tell whether or not you're looking at a real video or a deepfake. But just because we can't detect deepfakes with our eyes doesn't mean we can't detect them with algorithms. In fact, it turns out that deepfakes might leave a sort of fingerprint that can both tell us that it is a deepfake and what kind of model it came from. So while we might not be able to spot them with our eyes, it still may be possible for websites that host video content to use algorithms to tell us that we're looking at a deepfake instead. To understand how deepfakes can be identified, we first have to talk a little bit about how deepfakes are made. I did a much more detailed explanation of this in my recent video on how deepfakes work, but in short, deepfakes are created using GANs, or Generative Adversarial Networks. GANs take a set of training data and they pit two different types of machine learning models against each other. One model is called a generator and its goal is to create synthetic data that is indistinguishable from the training data. The other model is called the discriminator and its goal is to correctly tell whether or not the piece of data that it's looking at has been synthesized by the generator or if it's an actual real piece of data. As these two models go back and forth, the generator learns to create synthetic data that is a better representation of the real training data, and the discriminator learns to detect increasingly subtle differences between the synthetic data and the real data set. And I'm saying representation for a reason. The goal of the generator is not to create synthetic data that is an exact match to the training data set, but to create synthetic data that is similar in distribution or has the same features as the training data. The website This Person Does Not Exist is a great example of this because the synthesized images that you're seeing were not in the training data set because they were pictures of people who don't exist. However, the generator's goal was to create images that looked enough like people that the discriminator wouldn't be able to tell, and so these are those images. The push and pull between generator and discriminator networks means that as we develop better detectors and better deepfake generation systems, it becomes increasingly difficult to tell the real data apart from the synthetic data because the generator learns to make better data. This is why you would probably be able to tell that something was wrong in a deepfake made from a couple years ago, but you might not be able to tell that you're even watching a deepfake now. So what can algorithms see that we can't? This. This is the fingerprint of a generative adversarial network trained on specific parameters to create images of people who don't exist. It comes from a preprint from 2019, where researchers from several different institutions set out to find and visualize the fingerprints that generative adversarial networks leave behind. In this paper, the authors figured out that GANs leave fingerprints that are not only specific to the type of model used to generate them, but also to the parameters used to train that model, such as different sets of training data or different initializations. They also show that these fingerprints are distinct enough from each other that we can plot them in a way that makes it clear to our own eyes. Finally, they developed models that could identify identify both whether an image was GAN generated and which model it came from with over 95% accuracy on their data. Now, this is a really cool paper, but for this to work in the real world, we'd need to be able to characterize the fingerprint of every known deepfake generator. We would also need to be able to apply this to video instead of still images. This isn't an impossible task, but it does mean that deepfake detectors will always be trailing behind deepfake generators because we need the new model to characterize its fingerprint. Luckily, it turns out that there might be another way to to detect deepfakes that doesn't rely on model-specific characteristics, but instead on something more human. While it's not possible to directly measure your heart rate from a video, it is possible to extract other signals that we can use to then calculate your heart rhythm. In particular, it's possible to measure the small periodic changes in skin color of a person in a video caused by blood flowing through your face. This method is called Remote Visual Photoplethysmography, or PPG, and it allows us to extract normal heart rhythms from video. Well, from real video. It turns out that deepfakes haven't been able to replicate that quite yet. In fact, two papers from August 2020 looked into using heartbeat rhythms to detect deepfakes. The first focuses on a model called Deep Rhythm, a model that identifies deepfakes by analyzing an augmented representation of the change in a person's skin color within the video, where the augmentation makes the difference between real and fake videos clearer. 
Deep Rhythm was able to perform better than almost all the deepfake detection models that came before it. It's important to note here that while Deep Rhythm does seem to perform very well on data that it's already seen, it does not perform as well on data that it's never seen before, as seen in the last column on the right, where it was tested on data from the deepfake detection challenge, which it had not been trained on. But what if we wanted to both identify whether something was a deepfake and tell what model it came from? Well, the second paper from August 2020 focuses on that. In this paper, the authors develop an algorithm that extracts that remote visual PPG signal from the faces in the videos and detects whether a video is a deepfake, as well as a model that takes those remote visual PPG signals and uses them to determine which model the video was originally generated by. Now, the deepfake detection accuracy is actually lower than a lot of other comparable models, but they are able to predict the source of the video with roughly 85% accuracy. In short, we might be able to use the main biological signal associated with human life to detect fake humans in videos. So I thought both of these papers were cool. In fact, I posted about them on Twitter, but a lot of you replied with concern over how publicly sharing these methods might allow others to create better deepfakes. After all, if we publish our methods on deepfake detection, in other words, developing better discriminator networks, won't somebody make a better generator network to match? At a high level, the consensus in the field seems to be that sharing this kind of research is our best shot at keeping up with current deepfake generation methods, even if it means we're always trailing a bit behind in the new advancements of deepfake generators. The nature of generative adversarial networks makes it seem like deepfake generation and deepfake detection will always be a cat and mouse game, with deepfake generators slipping through our fingers just as we thought we'd caught up. Additionally, sharing deepfake detection methods in a way that ensures privacy from anyone who might want to to use them to develop better generators while still allowing others to improve on existing methods would be pretty hard. In theory, you could make a company where the detection algorithm is proprietary and therefore isn't shared and then have all new methods routed through that company. But at that point, someone could just use your company's model to create their better deep fakes without actually having to know what's going on inside the model itself. There are also other proposed methods of preventing future deep fakes from being made, such as embedding signals into video data that would be transmitted during the deep fake generation process. And who knows, maybe we'll all start wearing necklaces and pins that emit signals that automatically poison any video recording for future deep fake use. In short, it looks like we'll never be quite out of the woods when it comes to deepfakes, but the field of deepfake prevention and detection is still pretty new, so there's a lot of room for us to grow. So if you'd like to discover new deepfake fingerprints and design models to identify deepfakes in real life but don't know where to start, I'd highly recommend starting with Brilliant's courses on algorithms and machine learning. Brilliant is a website and app that makes learning accessible and fun. As anyone who's watched my videos before knows, I like Brilliant because their approach is based on problem solving and active learning. Instead of passively watching videos, Brilliant's courses are about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them, and then answering questions that get you to think. In fact, Brilliant's course on computer memory is really helping me understand my parallel computing class because to write efficient code, you have to understand how computers store and retrieve information. You can take courses on anything from intro to neural networks to quantum computing to computational biology. In fact, they have courses for most of the topics that we've covered on this channel. Their courses are laid out like a story and are broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. There's no tests and no grades, so you don't have to worry about disappointing your brain implant. You can just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get started. And if you make a mistake, no big deal. Just check out the explanations to find out more. To get started, go to brilliant.org Jordan and sign up for free. In fact, the first 200 people that go to that link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Clicking that link supports my channel and gives you access to an amazing library of courses, so please check them out. Otherwise, if you like this video, you can let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also check out my video on how deepfakes work up here. Otherwise, you can follow my PhD life on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you all next Friday. Bye.